Hello there, very good evening and welcome to your Prime Time News Bulletin with me Shane Silva. Let's start off with a look at your headlines. Parliament to reconvene on the 8th of May. President signs Gazette notification. Corruption and fraud at Sri Lanka cricket exposed. Unity government will continue. A statement from the UPFA General Secretary. Minister Kiriala claims an MOU on continuing the national government is on the cards. Irinatiu residents return to their homelands demanding the restoration of their land rights. Moving on to your stories in detail, now we cross over to Shahin Jurangpati at the News First newsroom to take us through the top stories for the day. Shahin, over well, to thank you. Thank you very much, Shahin. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Shahin Jurangpati joining you from the newsroom. Well, if you just look at close up here, I have a piece of cake, uh, a cake actually, which has been cut into six. Well, I'll draw that analogy in a bit, but uh, just, just to give you a recap, for months and weeks now, there has been talk of a restructure within the United National Party, a possible cabinet reshuffle, and then finally the continuation of the national government. Now, the president has returned to the country following the conclusion of the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting, which was held in London, and several crucial decisions regarding the matters I just raised uh, are to be made. Uh, now, let's start with the restructuring process of the United National Party. Now, keep in mind this cake that I've cut into six. Now, there have been constant calls for a change in party leadership and somehow, uh, from the, over, over and over again, but somehow this matter and this issue has been evaded over, the, uh, over time. Now, this time, according to the latest reports, as part of this restructuring process, uh, there is a proposal to appoint six deputy leaders to the United National Party. Now, this is where this cake comes into play. This cake has been divided into six, and similarly, the United National Party is being divided into six, where six deputy leaders are being appointed. Now, the names which have been proposed, if you look onto my far right, are Ravi Karnanayaka, Mangala Samaravira, uh, Dr. Rajita Sena Ratna, Sarat Fonseca, Ranjit Madhama Bandara, and Talata Atakorla. There have been also other names which have been proposed for these deputy leadership positions. Now, there are also reports that the party's headquarter, Sirikota, is also to be divided into three sections, which will be, which, uh, where a secretary will be appointed to each section. Now, what, just keep in mind, what is a is that J.R. Jawardhana, which has led the United National Party to crushing victories to gain a 5-6 majority, led the party with just one general secretary. Just food for thought. I think we are all aware the pressure to restructure the party, the United National Party, came about after the UNP, which has lost a total of 30 elections during its time, uh, lost the most recently held local government election as well, while in power, and also to a newly formed political party. It goes without saying that the United National Party, which is, of course, as we know, the single most largest political party in this country and has achieved so much more for this country, which is suffering an internal crisis at the moment. So one could suggest that the fall of democracy inside such a big party in the country could lead to a setback in the country as a whole. Now, what is happening in the UNP, like I said before, could be similar to this cake here being divided into six. Each person is having their piece of cake. The question is, how will they do it? And when will they do it? Something now, something might also, someone, some might also question us, why are we talking about this? As a media station, why are we talking about this? As we said before, the United National Party uh, is a noble political party which has been around for the longest time. And we as a media, out, media outlet have a concern and we have a right to speak about these things. And some members in the UNP itself uh, who really do want their voices heard are not allowed to do so, which is why it is our right to create that platform for these members to express their views. Having said that, speaking at a media briefing held today, Deputy, Speak, uh, Deputy Minister Radha Ranjan Ramanayaka drew an interesting analogy to the current situation in the party. <laughs> Everything has a date of expiry. Even milk has an expiry date. Let's talk about the Prime Minister in cricketing terms. He was given several opportunities to bat on the field. Let us also bat. You would never know if we could score sixers or boundaries and go on to score a century. You cannot just assume. Let Sajit and Navin bat as well. It is wrong for him to always ask to bat by himself. This is like when we played when we were kids. Does this mean we have to always bowl? It is wrong. You have to let the others bat as well. He always says, no, I'm not out. I want to bat again. I think that isn't good enough. He has to say, Ranjan, you bat now and I will bowl. If you do that, great players will be created in the future. 
there are great players in our party. We let him bat in 2002, and on that day, he did score century. He took over government, and he got out in 2004. Then in 2010, we imported a new batsman. And in 2015, another batsman was imported. We played on the bench. Well, uh, further referring to the analogy which Deputy, Deputy uh, Minister Ranjan Raman I referred to in cricketing terms now, we all know that uh, Ranil Vikramasinghe, the current Prime Minister of Sri Lanka, well, became the leader of the United National Party in 1994. And it's needed to say how the scoreboard of the United National Party has been since then. Uh, and we know how it has turned out up to now. Now, in 2013 and or somewhere around 14, uh, a leadership council was appointed uh, to make reforms to the party and propose certain reforms. Uh, now, this committee of co council, of course, was led by Karul Jaya Surya. Now, days before the Uwa Provincial Council, this council, was dissolved. So there could have been possibilities where the World Provincial Council could have been won. Now, again, against this backdrop, will the supporter or the, uh, the member of the United National Party have any faith uh, about any possible change? Now, like uh, Deputy Minister Ranjan Ramanayaka said, let us bet. You can bowl this time around. You can't bet alone. S similarly, now this time around, uh, after the defeat at the local government election, it was said a new generation of leaders would be created. Then, a no-confidence motion was brought against the Prime Minister. There were several uh, members of the UNP who spoke out against their leader, saying we, they will support the no-confidence motion, with the likes of Pali Tarangi Bandara, Vasanta Senanayaka saying they would support the no-confidence motion. How eventually, just moments before the uh, vote was taken up, these members backed their leader and voted against the no-confidence motion. Uh, so whatever the reform that was said will happen before the no-confidence motion in the party was said that would happen after the motion of no-confidence was taken up in Parliament. Now, just recently, a political council was also appointed to make proposals for party reforms. Turns out, even the party leader, according to reports, even the party leader sits at these meetings. So the question is, what do the members think about this? Here's what uh, Minister pa State Minister Palita Rangabandara had to say about the matters. Power has not been decentralized. We continue to call for reforms and the Prime Minister has proposed that city Kota function as four separate sectors. I think that this will be discussed and implemented only following the next working committee meeting. The working committee and our parliamentary group have taken a unanimous decision that the party leader will not be changed. So if the party leader is not being changed, then it is the other positions including the general secretary. According to the party constitution, the appointment of the general secretary is the prerogative of the leader. Now we raise the issue again as to why we are talking about this matter so comprehensively. Well, many would understand that, many of the UNP loyalists rather would understand that we do here, many of us at the serious organization, at News First, are UNP voters ourselves. And according to reports, what we've been told, a team has been appointed to create a problem, to create a rift between the United National Party and Sirasa News First. Well, we reiterate our issue is with the UNP leadership, not the United National Party. I've been said before over and over again, the United National Party is one of the longest, uh, one of the oldest parties in this country and has achieved so much for this country. And it is one of the noble and most respected parties in this country. It is a shame to see it go down this road and into its own destruction. Now, moving on. Uh, General Secretary uh, of the United People's Freedom Alliance, Minister Mahinda Amaravira, also says it will continue uh, with the coalition government with the United National Party. Now, the minister made this uh, statement upon the inquiry made by News First following an event held in Colombo today. The UNP and SLFP are functioning as a national government. We are clearly going ahead with the program for a national government while protecting the identity of our party and taking the decisions for the sake of the country. Our primary objective is to take the country forward. Minister Sara Tamrugama has drafted this report and it will be submitted soon. However, members of the SLFP who voted in favour of the no-confidence motion against the Prime Minister and eventually defected from the government say the Sri Lanka Freedom Party should completely leave the government. Such a proposal has not been raised officially in the Central Committee. If such a proposal is to be made, it should be included into the agenda. Then it should be discussed and a decision taken. Now, speaking following an event, uh, during an event in Kandy today, Minister Lakshman Kiriala also said the United National Party expects to sign a memorandum of understanding to continue with the national government. 
The President and Prime Minister will sign a memorandum of understanding soon to continue the good governance government. After it is signed, the United National Party and Sri Lanka Freedom Party will get together and carry on this government for the remainder of its term. But the media is always waiting for this government to fall apart. But there was a presidential election followed by a parliamentary election and there was also a no-confidence motion which the government won. So no matter how much the media waits for the government to fall apart, it wouldn't happen that easily. We have formulated a plan for the next two years. We are ready to face a presidential election next year. Well, this was a minister who said... Uh the media will be taught a lesson moments after the local government election. Well, we know how all, that, how all of that panned out. Now, since the inception of this government three years ago in 2015, we have been, the media has been uh, overshadowed, have been focusing entirely on the internal struggles of the United National Party and the Sri Lanka Freedom Party. Just think for a moment and just, just see how many times cabinet has been reshuffled during these three years. Well, while all of this is happening, there are actual, real issues the people of this country are facing outside. The very people who they elected to represent them and resolve the issues are having a power struggle right now. The question is, who will look into these matters? The, rupee, uh, the dollar is now at 156 rupees. Our foreign reserves are falling apart. The debt burden is rising day by day, which the people have to incur eventually. Now, it, it, we also know it's a common, it's common fact that the monsoons are expected quite soon. Now, the important, all important question is, is the, are the authorities doing enough to brace for this? Are we going to be reactive or proactive? Last time we had the floods, several, several lives are lost, several damages were caused to property, several people lost so many. The question is, we are expected to learn from our mistakes, learn from each and every disaster we face. The question is, are these, being, are these things being done? Are these things... Are measures being taken by the authorities who are elected by the people who are suffering right now to look into their issues. Farmers in Anuradhapura, Polonaro, so on and so forth, are suffering, who, are, who cannot yield a decent crop. Now it is the outsiders who are eventually coming in to resolve the problems in our country, while the people who were elected to run this country are resolving their own issues. Who will hold power? Now, it's, like, it's similar to this. If you own a household, if you're running a household, your own house, if you have an internal issue inside the house, you would not go to your neighbor and get it resolve your internal matters. This is exactly what is happening in Sri Lanka right now. The IMF, the International Monetary Fund, is now telling us how to price our fuel. And if we don't, we will not get to the next tranche. This is the issue Sri Lanka is suffering at the, at the moment. And even when this government came in, they promised one of the key mandates that they said will, will be carried out was that they will fight against corruption. This is where we come to these two, excuse me, these two gentlemen, Arjuna Mahendran and Udyanga Virutunga. Arjuna Mahendran, of course, as we know, is one of the key uh, people, in, key persons involved in the bond scam and Udyanga Virutunga in the controversial Big deal. Now, authorities have been successful uh, in securing, uh, have been unsuccessful in uh, securing the extradition of Sri Lanka's fugitive former ambassador to Russia, Udyanga Virutunga, who is in Dubai. Now, a warrant was issued uh, for Udyanga Virutunga, who is absconding from court in connection to the controversial MIG deal, and Interpol has also issued red notice. Now, Virutunga was placed under arrest in the UAE on the 24th. Uh, of March in line with the international warrant and continues to be detained there. Now the issue here is uh, the necessary, a senior official has said that the necessary documents for the extradition of Viratunga uh, have been sent to authorities in the UAE and they said that a request needs to be submitted for the extradition in line with extradition laws. However, it was reported that the extradition treaty with the UAE has not been ratified in Sri Lanka's parliament. Now while all of this is happening, it begs the question what is the ambassador in the UAE, who we have in the UAE, this person on my far right, who is um, Suleiman Jeffrey Mohideen, doing to secure this arrest? Because an ambassador of a country represents a state. The question is, what is happening here? Then we also have Arjuna Mahendran. A red notice, is, uh, notice has also been issued, and Interpol is on the hunt for him. Again here, on my immediate left here, uh, the High Commissioner for Singapore in Nimal is Nimal Viratna. Again, what is the ambassador doing to secure the arrest and get uh, Ma, uh, Arjuna Mahendran extradited, extradited to Sri Lanka? Now, over these matters, we spoke to the Justice Minister uh, Thalata Atukoral about this matter, and here's what she had to say. 
මේ දවස්වල අර මාධ්‍ය පළමුණානේ ඇමතුමේනේ අර මේ අපේ උදාරතන පනත අපි අස්සම් කරාට රටවල් එක්ක ඒක තාම පාර්ලිමේන්තුවේ සම්මත කරලා නැති නිසා අර මේ උදයංග විරතුන් මහත්තයා වගේ කට්ටිය ලංකාවට ගේන්න බෑ කියලා කියමු කියලා සත්‍යතාවය පොඩ්ඩක් තියෙනවද කියලා දැනගන්න. ඒක දැන්ම මට වැඩ කියන්න විදියක් නැහැ. ूपीसूपर डी and from liter of kerosene oil the cpc incurs a loss of 49 rupees these losses are not due to a mistake by the cpc the cpc has collapsed their loss is over 190 million a day just because the price of oil increases in the world market the prices won't increase through the pricing formula when it is at 15 rupees and 47 cents when we are paying 23 rupees more for the dollar the government should take a decision to strengthen the consumer as well as well as the cpc without the burden being laid on the people the tax should be reduced an open price formula should be introduced until a pricing formula is made to not increase oil prices subject minister secretary to the ministry chairman of the cpc please set out the factual position of the cpc we are prepared to give you the necessary air time in this regard if you are unable to come forward you should be ashamed If you are unable to provide the factual position of the CPC you are not suitable to hold those posts and you should vacate your posts immediately Well as indicated by us there are actual crucial matters which need urgent attention by those elected by the very people of this country who are suffering of these rising debt burdens rising cost of living the question is will those in power will those who are elected by the general public of Sri Lanka look into these matters and focus on the people's issues news first we'll keep a close watch until then uh, stay with us we now cross over back to the main news studio when shane is standing by shane is back to you thank you shahin moving on to other local news now president maitri pala sirisena has signed the gazette notification proclaiming that parliament will reconvene at 2:15 pm on the 8th of may secretary to the president austin fernando said the gazette had been referred to the government printer to be published President Sirisena prorogued parliament on the 12th of this month through an extraordinary gazette notification a fresh gazette notification had to be issued since the date and time of the next sitting had not been mentioned in the extraordinary gazette notification proroguing parliament Convening a media briefing today Deputy Minister Ranjan Ramanayake launched a scathing attack on alleged corruption in Sri Lankan cricket in Sri Lanka cricket Sumit Pala Mahatmya te I must state clearly that Tilanga Subadipala has no right at all to hold the position of president of Sri Lanka cricket according to the act. We are also aware that Tilanga Subadipala owns Lakbima and as such he cannot hold this position according to the law. Secondly, if you have engaged in the sale of sports equipment to the National Sports Association or if you have conducted training camps at schools in relation to the sport for a period of 4 years before nominations are called, you are not eligible. You are aware that Sumati Sports imports this type of equipment. The final charge is the most dangerous charge because it deals with the direct or indirect involvement of the president of SLC with betting, gambling and the gaming industry. I wish to ask journalists here whether he owns a gambling business. The ICC's anti-corruption arm leveled an allegation at us. Alex Marshall and Steve met with me too. I told them all I know. Having heard of this the chairman said there was no such allegation and there was no such inquiry too the anti corruption team then issued a release stating that there was no such thing now they are still investigating the allegation if that was not the case these officers would not have been here last week there is corruption there too natangi maturu gesumani me inne ne speaking further the deputy minister had this to say 
Nidhas Kosalani. Hiru News found fault with Sumadipal over the past few days regarding the expenses incurred for the Nidhas Trophy. However, since they received commercials for 2 million rupees, they stopped this. The Hiru channel is here. These are people who are very critical of me and attacked me severely. However, Sumadipala, who was bad all this time, has suddenly become a good person. After they got a commercial, we don't know how he has become so good. This is how funding was obtained for journalists to go overseas through the sponsorship of the cricket board. I am not opposed to this, but I must say the truth. I don't know if you are aware that certain persons passed off as photographers on this trip. 2.5 million rupees was also provided by Sumadipala to a priest to be a priest of the cricket university. There is still no news of the construction of the cricket university. A book on cricket has been published. One cricket book is 2.6 million rupees. Another is 1 million rupees. Sri Lanka cricket collected money for a kidney project. Where are these funds? These executives who served in Sri Lanka cricket have taken sexual favours as bribes. There is an insurance scam. Executive officers have 10 million rupees. How much more do they have? Original landowners of the Irinativu Island return demanding their land which is under the control of the security forces. Irinativu Island was taken under military control as a result of the war. In 1992, 178 families living in the Irinativu Island were evacuated. The island had churches, hospitals, a post office and other facilities when it was taken over by the security forces. The area, which is 6 square kilometres, is divided into two islets, Peria Irinativu and Sinna Irinativu. The families that were removed from the island were relocated to the Irinamata village in Punakari. This morning, the original dwellers of the island returned demanding their homeland back. They had travelled for over 12 nautical miles to reach the Irinativu island. There were around 350 residents who arrived in approximately 40 boats. The Navy officer in charge of the security of Iranativu arrived at the location and briefed the security situation to the people who arrived there. The people charged that they will not leave until their island is released back to them. News first spoke to the Navy media spokesperson, Commander Dinesh Bandara, regarding the matter. The spokesperson said the people's requests will be looked into. Moving on to other local stories now, retired Army Colonel Albert Vijetunga, who was in charge of the avant-garde floating armory, has been further remanded until the 3rd of May. The suspect was further remanded when the case was taken up before Gaul Chief Magistrate A. Nishanta Piris today. Gaul Chief Magistrate A. Nishanta Piris issued the order after denying bail for the suspect. Attorneys representing retired Army Colonel Albert Vijetunga informed court that a letter was issued by the Ministry of Defence regarding the weapons when the vessel was seized. The attorneys pointed out the letter contained all the details including the name of avant-garde, time of service and serial numbers of the weapons and was signed by the Defence Secretary. The attorney said court has not been informed about these documents. The State Council said the Criminal Investigations Department has acted on reasonable grounds. Let's now take a look at the day's illustrated news by Asanka Ladohetti. And that's a wrap of your bulletin for tonight. Are we ready to battle the aftermath of the Southwest monsoon? Stay tuned to TV One. Up next is Face the Nation, a multi stakeholder discussion on preparedness, early warning, mitigation, and lessons learned. Face the Nation asking the questions you won't answer. Good night.